Hi, you ready? Welcome to the Clock Project Lesson 4. Um, obviously, if you haven't yet done videos 1 to 3, then please go back and finish those before starting this one. Uh, let's have a bit of a recap of where we are so far then. So we've uh, got most of our mechanism uh, replicated. So this is the real world one, obviously. We're then going to aim to get this virtual clock mechanism uh, within the next lesson or two. So far, we've already designed the main body, the mounting bracket, and uh, some of the hardware that attaches these together. All that's left for us to do today then is to start making the different hands that uh, form the clock. And then we can look at putting them all together next lesson. So in terms of what we're gonna to do today then, we've got three hands to design. Uh, it should all be fairly straightforward using a lot of the skills that we've been looking at over the last couple of weeks. And uh, then we can get them all put together very soon. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, though, we'll have a quick look at our engineer's drawing. So we've got the three hands uh, down at the bottom here. Lots of dimensions to work with uh, for these ones. So you're gonna to have to pay close attention to what I'm doing in the video today. Uh, once again, I've already got Inventor loaded. If you need to do that, go and have a look at video one, uh, especially if you get stuck and it doesn't seem to load, as there's a helping hint to uh, get it going for you. So once we're in Inventor, obviously we're gonna click part because we're gonna be starting a brand new part. And we're gonna start off today with the hour hand. That's gonna be our first one that we're going to design. Uh, as with everything, we are starting a new sketch first and we're gonna be on the XY plane because that's the one we wanna be using for this project. Uh, we're gonna start off with creating the uh, circle and the hole on the right hand side of our design. So we're gonna do that bit first. So we're gonna start a circle and we always like starting a circle in the center of the sketch. And we're gonna do two circles. We'll have a smaller one and then a slightly bigger one. The smaller one, is going to be set to five millimeters. Again, you can find all of this information on your engineer's drawing. The larger one is going to be 10. So far, so good. Now we're gonna get a little bit fancy and a little bit complicated. If we have a look here, you can see this part of the hand is 31 millimeters long, but I'm gonna start the line from the dead center of this hole, which means we need to add in an extra five millimeters to account for the radius of this section here. So we're actually gonna put in a dimension of 36. And the way we're gonna do this, using the line tool, we'll start the line where the dot goes green in the middle, drag it over to the left along the line here, and we'll click. You then right click and OK to get out of that tool. We can then set the dimension of this line by clicking on it. You then drag down and click again, and we're gonna go for 36 because the uh, reason for that, this part of the line up to the edge of the circle needs to be 31, but because I started it from the center here, we have an extra five millimeters to account because that's half of that circle. So that's why we've done that. Next up, we're gonna go back to the line tool and we're gonna add two more. So at the end of this line where the dot goes green, we're gonna click. We're gonna drag up at a bit of an angle and we're gonna bring another line across to the point where it touches the circle. Back to dimension tool, we're gonna to click on that line. Don't click just yet though, because now we're gonna go down to the bottom line and click that one as well. And we can now set the distance between those two lines as two millimeters. And if you hit enter or okay, it'll then bring those to two millimeters away. We're now gonna be a little bit fancy again. So if I zoom in a little bit, I'm gonna click the end of this line. You see where the dot goes red. I'm then gonna click the other end of the line where the dot goes red. And I'm gonna drag straight up and create a new dimension that's three millimeters. And you can see we're most of the way there. And if I wanted to, I could draw two more lines like I've just done on the bottom, set the dimension, and then I could uh, do it like that. But I'm gonna show you a little cheat that we can use instead. So we're going to use the mirror tool and we will then select those top two lines. We'll then go onto here and click mirror line and I'm gonna mirror it along the bottom line. And if you click apply, you can see it's copied those shapes and imagine that middle line's a mirror, it's just flipped it over 
to create our shape. And then you click done. So that's our basic shape. We can now finish this sketch and we can extrude it. Now with this, you've got to be careful. I want you to make sure we've selected all of the parts of the shape, apart from that little circle in the middle. And we're going to change this dimension to 1.5 millimeters. And you just hit enter or click OK. The last part for the hour hand is to make this circle part at the end a little bit thicker. Because if you look on your diagram, that end's actually three millimeters thick. So to do this, we're gonna click on front. So we've got a nice front on view. You'll then start a new sketch and you're gonna click on the surface to start the sketch. And if we zoom in, we can then start the new circle right in the middle. And if you drag it next to the original circles that are there, you don't have to create a dimension. We can then finish the sketch, extrude just the little donut part there. If you need to zoom in, make sure you do. You don't want to highlight this middle part as well, otherwise it'll try and fill it in. We'll change the value to 1.5 and we are done. That is the hour hand complete. As before, we need to save this in our clock project folder by going file, save as. Make sure you are in your clock project uh, folder. As a final reminder for this one, hopefully, if you go to your name from the drop down menu, double click on documents, you go down to your technology folder and double click to get in there, your year eight clock project folder. And then we are gonna call this clock hour hand and then just click save. Next up, we can have a look at making the minute hand and it's gonna be incredibly similar. All we're gonna do is make the minute hand a little bit longer. So let's go and do that right away. If you remember from last lesson, you can also start a new part by clicking file, a new. We then want a standard.ipt, so make sure that one is highlighted and then click create. Now we're in the uh, new part. We're gonna start a new sketch on the XY plane and it's gonna be pretty much a repeat of the process. So let's speed through it this time. Two circles. The bigger one is going to be 10, just like last time. The smaller one though is only going to be three millimeters. And you can find this out by looking at your engineer's drawing you see on this one, the minute hand. Outside one is still 10, the inside one though is only three. Now remember, the length of the hand is 46, but we're gonna add on the extra five millimeters to start in the center here. So it's actually gonna be 51. So if we go back to Inventor, we'll then start a line from the middle. We're gonna go straight out and click. We'll then use the dimension tool to set that one to 51. And if you zoom out, there we go, you can see you've got a 51 millimeter line. As before as well, we're gonna create two new lines, one coming up at an angle, the other one that goes straight across to the circle. The dimension tool, if you click between the two lines, you click one, you then click the other line, you can then create the dimension at two millimeters. And if we zoom in again on the end, we can click the little red dots at either end of the line. We then go straight up and change that to three. I'll do a quick recap of the mirror tool. So you click mirror, you then select the two lines that we want to mirror. You then click the arrow next to where it says mirror line and select that bottom line. You need to make sure you click apply and then you can press done. As before, we will finish the sketch, go to extrude, making sure we click all three areas that we want to extrude and we'll change that value to 1.5, just like last time. Last thing we'll do is make this end thicker again. So we'll go back to front. We'll then zoom in a little bit. We'll start a new sketch on that surface. And if we use the circle tool, remember if you hover right near it, and right near the lines, you get the uh, dimension automatically. 
We'll then finish the sketch, extrude it, just that area, by another 1.5. And that is the minute hand. Very similar to the hour hand, just a little bit longer. And we'll save this one. Now it should remember the folder that you were in. You should by now get the idea of what we're going to call it. So we've called that one clock minute hand. The final part that we need to create is the second hand. And if you have a look, this one is slightly different. And we're going to use some slightly different features to create it. Uh, but we can do that pretty easily. So let's have a look at starting a new part. So we go File, New, making sure we've got standard.ipt, and then we'll start a new sketch on the XY plane. Uh, we'll start off by making the uh, circular part first. So if we click on Circle and we'll create our circle, remember you can right click and go OK to get off the part. Now if we look at our drawing, our drawing is being a little bit cunning here, it says R. 4.5 and what that means is a radius of 4.5 millimeters but whenever we type in on inventor we actually type in a diameter so if it's a radius of 4.5 it's actually going to be a diameter of 9 and that creates the circle that we need there the next part is going to be done using a slightly different tool so we're going to go to where it currently says polygon might say rectangle on yours. If you click the drop down, we're going to go to the slot tool and we'll click the slot. We'll start in the center. We'll then drag across to the left and we'll create a slot. We can then go to the dimension tool. We're going to click the top line and the bottom line and we'll set that thickness to 1.5. And then we will set the overall length from this end to the end of the circle. And remember, we need to add on our radius onto there as well. And for this, we're going to type in 53.31. Sounds a bit random, but trust me, that is the right size. And that makes that slot a little bit longer. And that gives us the, the shape for that part of the uh, the hand. We're going to do the same again now with another slot. We're going to start again on the opposite side. We'll create a new dimension between the two ends. And we are going to go for, we'll round this one up. We can go a little bit crazy with this. We'll go 19 millimeters and then we'll click the top and bottom and we're going to set that to three. We can now finish our sketch. Once again, we're going to extrude all of these. Now we need to make sure we actually select all of these shapes. We don't want to leave any of these out and we're going to extrude the whole thing by one millimeter. And actually that's pretty close to having a finished uh, hand. The only thing we need to do is have the little um, spindle poking out to the middle of it that we use to connect it to the clock mechanism. So to do that, we're going to view it from the front by clicking the little box up here in the top right. We'll then start a new sketch on that surface. We'll zoom in to the middle and we're going to start a new circle right in the center. And we're going to make the dimension of that circle 1.5 millimeters and if we look back at our engineer's drawing we can see it on this one here that this little part here extends up by four millimeters so when we finish the sketch and we go to extrude we are going to change that number to four and there we have it that is the completed second hand as we always do at this stage we go file save as you're inside the clock project folder, same as always, call it clock second hand and save it. And with that, we have now completed all of our clock components. 
In the next lesson, I will show you how to put all of the parts that we've made together to create one clock assembly that we can see how it's going to look in the real world. So that's what we'll be doing next time.